So welcome to Photokina 2018. We're here at the camera rescue booth with Omer from Cat Labs of GP, all the way from the US. So um, Omer does a lot of things in his store, large format items, Jobo, a distributor and importer officially in the US, Burger too, which the products are here now. So Omer, tell us uh, what's up with Burger. I know there's some news, so let us yeah. know. So on my hat uh, of Burger, so, uh, which I manage the distribution in the US for, first thing I can say is uh, Panko 400 film is finally back in stock and will be hitting stores uh, probably a week or 10 days after the show in Europe and a couple weeks later in the US. Uh, both 120 and 35 are getting ready. Uh, 8 by 10, uh, well, all sheet films are back. Uh -huh. And uh, the real biggest news of this particular shipment is we're gonna, ha well, other than the film being back in stock, is we're gonna have 11 by 14 mm -hmm. and 16 by 20 cut sheets uh, in regular stock. Okay. So that's gonna be ready and so available in the US. Continuous, re you know, it's gonna be shipping Every absolutely. now and then, whenever absolutely. the stock goes down. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, anybody that's interested in a specific size mm -hmm. can always call us, and okay. we can cut size to order without a special production like Ilford does uh, oh. once a year. Or Kodak does with a high. Right, with a huge amount. Yeah. We're able to do uh, as little as 10 boxes. Okay. And if it's a popular size and someone only wants a few boxes, we'll do it and keep the rest in stock. Okay, so for example, I was talking to you at the booth uh, that you guys have at the show. Uh, that the 11 by 14 is going to be priced uh, even under the HP5 because I'm an HP5 shooter and 11 by 14, yeah. and I think that's very important to note that the price is going to be better. Yeah. So that's a great thing because I've seen, um, you know, Burger doing a great job with that yeah. in the U.S. There's, yeah, there's something to remember about Panker 400. It's the only independently made film on the market today. It's not made by Ilford, not made by Kodak, not made by Foma. Uh, it's made in a facility that makes one film only, which is our film, which is why we like to call it our facility. Okay. So it's our film in our factory and our emulsion is the only independent film in the world. And it happens to be a very high quality film at that. So it's, it's really a good product and we're able to price it very competitively. So if you have uh, the chance, you don't have to go out of your way to use it because it's uh, as, as attainable or convenient as anything else. Definitely HP5, but it, in special, in the extreme cases of like 11 by 14, we're able to have a really good price on it oh, yeah. um, and uh, try to get it out there you know, oh. for people to use. I'm, I'm excited. I remember two years ago at this show, we talked about it, never got published because I messed up audio. But it was coming, and it, thankfully now it actually is going to be in stock. So I'll be getting some boxes soon. So, Omer, um, one of the other big things that people know Cat Labs is for the packed film situation. I know that you recently announced that it's not going to be a continued uh, effort anymore. I do know you've done a lot of efforts, but could you tell us a little bit of how that started and some of the things that have gone through so people understand what it's, you know, the journey has been to come to what it is today. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so this is a complete break from Burger, and I'm going to put my cat hat on. Okay, yeah, but uh, essentially, uh, we had already discussed uh, making or going into production for pack film long before Fuji announced that they were discontinuing. And the reason for that is because we knew that the price for pack film was artificial at the time. And um, we knew it was going to last. And in anticipation for the fact that it was going to get killed at some point, the price would have been changed. But we knew that there was some kind of strong market to support it. Uh, we started talking about it. Um, we had uh, a team. I was only a, a part of it. Uh, of some people that were working in France, in Germany, going all around the world. They literally flew to Japan and China to discuss all kinds of manufacturing and assembly and coding mm -hmm. and uh, just technical ideas. Um, ironically, New 55 mm -hmm. are an hour away from our office. Yeah, I know, I know. You know, and, and you know, at some point we kind of brought it up and, and said, hey, uh, you know, maybe there's something. In the it, it never materialized. It just, uh, you know, maybe there, there was like a, it wasn't there. And they were doing their own thing and, you know, and they were kind of pushed, they were very concentrated on it. And we were thinking about other things. Um, and then one of the things that happened uh, somewhere along the way is that we 
stumbled across uh, some technology, and I, I can't really say what it is. But uh, it's the thing that was under that blanket. The that thing we under all the tarp, saw. yeah, a piece of technology that we'll was. We'll never see it. I don't think uh, anybody will be able to see it now. Um, it was uh, hidden away uh, from the uh, relics of the old Polaroid factory in Waltham, uh, where that film was made. And, um, you know, we're talking about several tons of technology and schematics and electronics and what have you that's in an underground basement covered in a meter of dust. And uh, it, it wasn't difficult, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't easy to find it, but it is so deep in the underworld, it was even physically hard to get to it. Uh, and we were hoping that this is the key that will tie everything together, that we can go to other people and say, look, we found the missing link, mm -hmm. and now you can have faith in us, you can invest your end of the deal, and your end of the deal, and and, make and it. converge it over here and we'll put it all together and, and we have the vision but we have not the capability to do all of it, definitely not to finance it. Uh -huh. um, but then another thing happened which is uh, the price went up yep. and what we did hear is people saying things like, oh it's so sad Fuji discontinued PacFilm, I'm so sad I'll never be able to use it. And we said, but PacFilm is... Still readily available. available. You, if you want to shoot it, now is the time. In three years' time, you might not be able to do that um, because it might be gone or it might be so expensive that it really is ridiculous. But right now, it's on par with what we are very happy to pay for integral <coughs> film that shoots out of your camera. Yeah. And if the material is so wonderful, you know, don't lament it. Use it. Go shoot in it. Oh, yeah. And shoot a lot. Go, go out and shoot. That's what we always said. You want to buy more, shoot more. That's the only way to support the industry. And the people we were talking with uh, were not satisfied with this drive that we said, we're going to sell uh, this much film and we can support your investment. We will bring yeah. a return to your investment. Uh, because we were really starting from the ground, from the very scratch, and it would have required to build everything up. And unfortunately, we saw it more and more. And uh, there was a point where we said, it's probably not going to be, it's not going to happen for us. And we spent literally a huge amount of money, just the research, just to have people on planes, just to have the meetings. That was some money that we spent. Uh, that we were happy to spend. It was our investment in this industry. Our to investment try to make in, it back. Yeah. It, we, we weren't expecting to get it all back. We were expecting to get it back through the industry years down the line. And as soon as we decided that, that money may not be coming back, we were going to maybe not push it so hard. And then um, SuperSense are doing their Kickstarter, or they announced their Kickstarter, and um, we are very much in support of their project. Um, we think that uh, we, we, we tried our very best, but we went nowhere near uh, where we were expected to be two years down the line. And it looks like they have some kind of uh, cobbled up idea that's closer to, to, a final to realization uh, than where we would have wanted to be. And, um, it was important for us to say, let's have everybody concentrate. Concentrate on one thing. And what we really are hoping to see is everybody who's talking about pack film and talking about FP100 is to go to the Kickstarter and, 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 and you know, talk with your wallet. Yeah. And if you talk with your wallet, that's where it, that's where, that's where it makes a difference. Uh, if, if you just talk on Facebook, it doesn't really make an industry difference. And I really hope all the best. Uh, you know, I don't know what they're going to make. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be good, if it's going to be not so good, uh, you know, if we're going to love it or hate it. But uh, what I do know is if there will be a product, we will have to buy it. We will have to buy it with our, with our money. And it'll get better as it goes. I mean, I remember when Impossible Project started the first version, it was, I bought a bunch of packs to support it with not only my, you know, intentions, but with my money. And that, 
didn't seem so good, but down the line, it's turned into what it is today. Absolutely. And that's how it is by continuously supporting. Same thing with film. I mean, we all love the fact there's more film, but you know, we got to shoot more and have more fun and spread the word. That's what we're trying to do here. Yeah, the absolutely. Interviews. I think the most important thing to remember here is that um, there's a lot of film out there. And the same thing with pack film. If you have some film and you say, oh, I'm just going to save it for an important occasion, no. You have to go out and shoot and shoot and shoot and reload your camera all the time and don't think about it as waste. It's, you, you're investing in, your, in yourself, in your industry. So no, it's memories and it's things to share. And it's, and it's, a, tra it's a completely intrinsic thing that you can, you can hold in your hand uh, for generations. And pass. It's like an heirloom that you can pass on, but at the same time you're having fun. You're p participating in your, in, if it's your hobby or your profession, but you're supporting an entire industry. It's like uh, people that say, uh, we have stickers in the US that say, no farms, no food. It's true. If there are no farms, there's not going to be any food. And if there are no photographers putting their money in this product, there will not be a product. So we have to all participate. Yeah, it's, it's, a, um, it's a you know joint effort for that. Absolutely, everyone. we're all in the same boat. That's the important thing. To change to a different subject because you do multiple things, and let's change the hat to the large format um, specialized store because I think you guys are very specialized in large format. How do you see? the tendency in the market because we've seen in the last few years a tremendous amount of um, new people coming into large format through either older gear or new inexpensive large format gear. Do you think the trend will continue? Uh, what is going to be the shortcoming in the large format industry? Because we do know cameras seem to not be a big issue, at least that you know you can put load film in them. They can be better, they can be worse, but there are cameras out there. Uh, is it going to be lenses? Is it going to be film holders? Because yeah, there's some wooden ones, but plastic ones are not doing any more. Is there, you know, what you have a very big good picture of the industry? Uh, so so this, let me know. Yeah. So here's an interesting here's an interesting question. It's true we have an excellent supply of cameras, cheap cameras, medium price cameras, expensive cameras, new, used of every variety, mm -hmm. and we've had a huge disruption. Not and I'm not saying this in a negative way, but in a positive. It disrupted. Uh, years of stiffness with um, Intrepid camera and uh, Chroma and uh, um, the well, we uh, tra a, Travel Wide. Travel wide. The, there were all kinds of things that are like ventures into, and now VDS, for example, is a brand that we sell but is relatively inexpensive. It's a lower cost option um, that provides you with quality but also comes in at a lower price. Those are wonderful things, and it really disrupted the market. And this is all of a sudden, people really have it in front of their faces, yeah. whereas previously it was kind of an like old, the old, an old world. Like people yeah. and you know, shooting large format. Old world old photography, forums. old style. Yeah, the the large format forums. I've, heard, I've talked to a lot of young people, and they always say, "No, it's nice to see refreshment in you know YouTube," and that's what I do mostly. Right, right, right. Because the old forums, which I also a very big part of, are places that are very niche and hard sometimes, and harsh many times. But so, so what's the thing you see with, yeah, a lot of cameras, but... Yeah, but, th but there is a big but here. Uh, first of all, uh, Copal stopped making shutters in 2010. Ago. And we were not running out, we're, we ran, they ran out of, they ran out of on the shelf items. It's now just <laughs> what's in the used market, which is next to nothing. Mm -hmm. The companies like uh, Linhoff and Rodenstock and Schneider that had some spares for service, they're at the bottom of the barrels. That's their, you know, maybe they have another year's worth of supply. Spares are running low. So we're, we're in a difficult situation here because nobody is making shutters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was super impressed when Mint came out and they have a mechanical, sh electronically controlled mechanical shutter. I, we talked to Gary camera. and I was like, that's the future of many things. And he didn't see it so much, but I was like, you yeah, don't understand that. I, I, I told him and he said, yeah, we, we have no interest in doing anything other than putting that shutter in there. Um, but without shutters, <laughs> the, no the party is going to be over very soon. Uh, there is a huge amount of used equipment, etc. But used equipment, the lenses might last, but the shutters are mechanical and they have a limited lifespan. So we're nearing that point that it's going to. Yeah, it's going to just end up. Yeah, it's, it's, gonna it's getting harder. Like I, we've seen lens elements being available. You know, you can get the G Claron lenses, which are reproduction. But then it's like, yeah. oh, you get a shutter. It's not so easy anymore. That's right. So that's, that's right. going to be, you think, the main problem. I still believe that's the main problem with our format in the future. To come. That's an issue. 
that's an issue that we are having and we will have in the future. Film holders, I don't see a problem. No, there's film holders, I don't, I don't see a problem because they're being made. Um, you know, but the real, the real challenge is shutters and lenses. So, with that said, that's the, that's the pessimistic point of view. Okay. I'm going to say that there is a wave of equipment on the secondary market, second hand and old stock, that we have not yet seen. It's out there. And it's going to... There was a big wave that came out after the digital transition. Mm -hmm. Now there's a second wave that came out when people are kind of digging out their boxes from you know the basements and the no, well, that's the what, what we're trying to do at Camera Rescue. Is they're exactly, trying to find exactly. So there, that's the second wave. There is going to be a third wave that we have not seen yet, I believe. And in that third wave, of course, the prices are going to be higher. And the availability Every single time limited. it's been a little higher. Yeah. And the availability gets a little lower because we ran through more of it. Um, but I think there's hope yet. And uh, in a little uh, pre, uh, what do you call it, news embargo. Yeah, no. I'm going to break a news embargo here. Uh, we are working on manufacturing a universal shutter system. Our shutter system projection is to have an onboard electronic control mm -hmm. with a universal fitting for Copal 3. Copal All 1 and Copal 0 in the same housing. So essentially you'll have one shutter and you could put any cell on it because it will have built-in threaded adapters. Mm -hmm. And they will, right now the technical limitation that we're running into is speed. Uh, we at the moment can manufacture this with no problem with a manual speed control that you open yeah, and close like, an like a Packard shutter. Yeah. But we can't have timed okay. uh, open and close shutters because it's too much electronics to fit into a small housing. Mm -hmm. um, we will get there. I so, hope so if we can do that, we've solved the bigger problem. The bigger problem, and then it's just we'll see which one will be the next problem. Yeah, that's right. And the amazing thing that we're seeing in large format is that we're seeing processing solutions. I mean, you can process sheet film in a tray, really. Uh -huh. So you don't need much more than much a little, uh, and you don't have to buy a photo tray. You can buy a uh, you know, a tray, tray yeah, a tray like for that. food or something like that because yeah. it's just a plastic tray and it's just fine. Um, and, those, you know, those cost a few cents. And there's a CL81, which is an interim option, and uh, we're, we're going to have uh, automatic processors from the Cinesteel have their... Uh, yeah, you got Jobo, which is thing. Jobo, is another thing you work with. Right, and Jobo have these products. So we have legacy products that are coming out, new legacy products, to support things to support gaps in the market that didn't exist previously mm -hmm. and uh, they en enable more people to participate. To it's, an enab yeah, it's, more fun. A, it's an enabling uh, market segment. It's not the, uh, the people with resources can do it anyway, but we're talking about the people who need a little... Yeah, people that are buying a, maybe a, a little cheaper engine. camera to start and you Absolutely. want to start with that. The tray is an option, but some people... There's, there's, yeah, I've seen a big growth of processing tanks and uh, solutions yeah. and ideas throughout the year, so yeah. Well, anything else, Omer, that you want to <laughs> say? Because there's a lot going on with yeah. Labs. So a lot to say, a little bit of time. A little bit of time. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, now that we're, we're in a new building, we moved in uh, earlier this year, uh, I very much would like to invite you. Oh, I'll be there uh, next but, summer, don't worry, that's for sure. But everybody else to come visit us uh, at our new place and just wash your eyes on some cameras. We have excellent coffee. And uh, it's a nice place to visit. Uh, and of course, we have uh, three microbreweries in our neighborhood. Oh, that's so great. if you're coming, you ha can have you a little organize tour. a little get together. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, that's that's my uh, call that's out to everybody. To, okay. And of course, uh, before I forget, uh, I want to say uh, to everybody: shoot more film is the message uh, that we all want. Yeah. The message Just for spread. everybody. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you so much, Omer from Cat Labs, to, uh, to be with us at Farokina. Today's the last day, so we're all tired. Yes, you can um, hear that I haven't, I haven't all... talked to anybody for four days. Uh, today, I... It's the day. <laughs> today is the day so, yeah, to thank talk. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And good luck with everything. Thank you.